The Sony PlayStation was a new home console in the 90s which set and broke trends with their arrival. It is very nostalgic for a lot of people around my age, 25 to be exact, but isn't a very easy console to wrap your head around when its emulators haven't advanced much in the last 8 years. My name is Brad, and today on Unbroken Software Studio Tutorials, I'll walk you through how to set up PS1 emulation running through LaunchBox and going smoothly with RetroArch. A big warning for this tutorial, we will not be showing you where to get games or BIOS on the internet. While games might be in a gray area for consideration into abandonware, BIOS are not. BIOS are clear cut illegal unless someone has developed an open source version of them which does not exist right now for the PlayStation consoles. For the record, BIOS are developed by Sony for their console and are patented. The only way to legally obtain either of these is to rip them yourself or, in the case of games, insert the disc into your disc drive, though I suggest ripping them instead. Otherwise, Sony sells PlayStation 1 classics on the PlayStation Store, which is currently available on the PS3 and PlayStation Vita. Okay, first things first, let's set up an emulator in LaunchBox. So, go to Tools, Manage Emulators. You'll click Add. You'll either input your emulator name or select it from this drop-down box. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to go ahead and pick EPSXE. And then it's going to tell you we've populated the proper settings for EPSXE. You shouldn't need to change them. And then you can click, click here to download EPSXE if you need to download the emulator. Otherwise, you navigate to where you have your emulator installed. For me, it's my PS1 folder. And then you select the EPSXE EXE. And then over in the associated platforms, it should have populated Sony PlayStation. Once you have that all filled in, you just go ahead and click OK. You would do the same for RetroArch, but we already have a video setting up and updating RetroArch. So links to those videos will be in the description and the cards in the top right that you see popping up right now. Now we need to populate LaunchBox with games. As you can see here, this is my folder of PS1 ISOs and games. And we'll take Alone in the Dark, One-Eyed Jack's Revenge as an example. You'll see that there is a cue sheet and an ISO file in this folder. Sometimes you'll get a .img file or an image file. Sometimes you'll get an, a .mds file. You can tell which one is the game by the file size. If it's several hundred megabytes, then it's probably the game. However, RetroArch doesn't load games through the ISO, image, or MDS file. It loads it through the cue sheet, which means that all your games need to have a cue sheet. Now, in this instance, the reason why it's named cd.q and cd.iso is because I created the cd.q sheet. How I chose to create the Q sheets was with a program called IsoBuster. You'll load the ISO into IsoBuster, then you'll right click the CD on the left pane, then you'll extract CD and select raw bin ISO. You'll then navigate to where you want to save it. You'll hit save and it will go ahead and process the CD.ISO. Right afterwards, it will go ahead and save the CD.Q sheet. You can rename these if you'd like. You can rename them to Alone in the Dark if you'd, if you'd prefer. But the ISO and the Q sheet both need to be named the same exact thing. In this case, CD.Q and CD.ISO are both fine because I'm going to use the use the folder name when importing games. Another thing to note when working with cue sheets, you need to load them into a text editor. My preferred text editor is Notepad++. If you've been on the forums, you've seen me suggest this before for editing XML and for editing cue sheets. At the top, it needs to say file and then the name of the ISO, image, or MDS file, and then binary. ISO Buster will create this for you, but if you renamed the ISO, then you need to also rename where it says CD here in the cue sheet, otherwise it will not work. Cue sheets are important because it can tell the emulator information that the image file may not necessarily tell the emulator. For example, if you have a game that doesn't play any music when you load it through your emulator, chances are if you load it through the cue sheet, that'll fix its problem. Here at the import wizard, we're gonna go ahead and hit add files. Now in the last tutorial that I did, I told you guys to add folder for DOS games. This one is wildly different. We're gonna go ahead and add files instead. We'll navigate to where we have the PS1 games. And this method you could use for any system and it is really handy. Now, if I were to use this method normally, I would then have many duplicates of some games. Some games have three or four files in them, some have two. Either way, I only need the one file in LaunchBox, which would be linking towards the cue sheet. And in the cue sheet, it links towards the image file. That's how it knows what to do. In the top right, you'll see search. You'll type in quotation dot C-U-E 
quotation. Down here, it'll search your PS1 games folder for all the cue sheets that you have. So as you can see, I've created a lot of them, but some games do come with them. And then you'll hit Control A and then open. Once you do that, LaunchBox will process all your games. You'll hit next. Platform for imported ROMs. We'll go ahead and pick the Sony PlayStation. Next. For me, my default emulator is RetroArch. So next. We use the files in their current location because if you go to copy the files into my LaunchBox games folder, it will only copy the cue sheets. We'll search all three places. We'll parse emu movies. We'll uncheck box and box back so that there's no duplicates for the front and back covers. Here is where you need to use folder names instead of ROM file names for game titles. This is really handy if the file names are wrong, but the folder names are correct. And since a lot of my image files and cue sheets say cd.q, I need to use the folder name instead. So we'll hit next. And then, then everything is parsed correctly. We'll hit finish. And then here at the bottom, that'll go ahead and start to import everything like normal. And there it is. That's how you import PlayStation 1 games and add a PlayStation emulator into LaunchBox. If you go to the emulation tab, you'll see choose an emulator, RetroArch. I can change that to EPSXE if I wanted to. But otherwise, all the information is filled in. It's got the proper emulator there. And it's pointing to the CDQ sheet. If you have RetroArch installed but wanted to mess with EPSXE or vice versa, in the PlayStation 1 selection, you hit Control A. You right click and edit, and this will bring up the book edit wizard. You hit next, and then in the field you choose emulator, value, and then you either select RetroArch, or you select EPSXE. Then you hit next, and then confirm your changes, and then no, I do not need to change anymore. What this will do is it will change what each of these games uses for the emulator so that you don't have to go through and change them one at a time. This is how to get the games into LaunchBox and how to set up the emulator, but now if you're using RetroArch, we need to set RetroArch up. When you load in RetroArch under Associated Platforms, it will load in the Associated Platforms here on the left, default command line parameters here in the middle. So say I wanted to change the BSNES balanced libretro.dll to the SNES 9x libretro.dll. You go over here, you copy the name, come back, you double click, you highlight the selected area, and then you hit control V. And it went ahead and pasted the SNES 9x underscore libretro.dll into the default command line parameters. That is what tells it to load the core denoted by the dash L here. Something else that I want to note for PS1 emulation in RetroArch. You need three very specific BIOS names named SCPH5500. 5501 and 5502. There are a lot of BIOS for the PS1 system. You need BIOS named this specifically. In other emulators, you tell the emulator which BIOS to load, but you need in your system folder in RetroArch these three BIOS. Otherwise, you'll either black screen or RetroArch will just crash. And again, we will not tell you where you can find these BIOS files. I will tell you that you can rip them from your PlayStation 1 console. Once you have your BIOS in your system folder, there's one more thing that we need to do to make sure that RetroArch is looking in the right place for your BIOS file. Under your settings tab, hit up a couple times till you hit directory, press X, and then the first line here is going to say system slash BIOS directory. You'll open this up and then navigate to where you have your system directory for RetroArch. So for me, it's in my RetroArch folder, which is in my emulators folder. So here, this copy here, and then I go down to my system folder and then hit X, use this directory, and now it has set my system folder correctly. If you have your BIOS files, but you're still black screening or it's crashing, it may not be looking in the right location. And that's it. I should be able to launch a Lundra and it should play nicely in RetroArch. And there we go, a Lundra working in RetroArch. RetroArch is a little confusing at first, but with some trial and error, you should get it working fairly easily. If you guys have any questions on anything that I've covered in this tutorial, you're more than welcome to comment in the comment section below or go to the LaunchBox forums page, 
make a post and ask your questions there. Jason, myself, and several other members will most likely get back to you and will help you if you have any other issues. My name is Brad, and if you guys liked this tutorial or the sound of my voice, my channel is in the description below and is in the card system on the top right. I do a lot of gaming content on my channel, one of those being Random Nostalgia Generator, which is possible because of software like Launchbox. If that sounds like something you would like, head on over to my channel and subscribe if you like the content. Remember, Freaks and Geeks, play more games, and we'll see you next time on Unbroken Software Studios tutorials. Have a good day.